Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. So last week I put up a tutorial on crypto mats in Redshift and I really love crypto mats, but I did have a few comments saying that they seem to bog down After Effects quite a bit with RAM previews and rendering. And if you have a pretty heavy scene in After Effects, they definitely can slow things down. So um, I wanted to give you another option today when you're dealing with mats. So instead of crypto mats, let's go to our AOV manager and you can find that under Redshift AOV manager. And let's go down to our puzzle mat and we'll drag and drop that into here. So this is kind of a, another way that you can approach making mats. And if we look in our options here, we have mode and it has material ID or object ID. We're gonna start with object ID. And that just basically means you can assign any object in your scene a mat. And we're gonna do that with the red, green, and blue channels here. So let's find an object that we want to mat for and let's right click, let's go to redshift tags and redshift object. And then in our object tag, we can go to the object ID tab, click override, and then we can assign it a number. So if we make this one, we can go back to our AOV manager and assign red number one. That means this object is going to have a red mat. So if we want to uh, control drag that tag to a different object and assign that number two, we can go to the green ID and make that two, and then we'll drag it onto our third object, make that three and assign it a blue ID of three. So you might be thinking it's not really great that you can only have three different mats, but the nice thing is you can just add another puzzle mat. So every puzzle mat has three options. Let's just add another one. We'll switch that to object ID, and then we can carry on down the line by dragging this tag, uh, duplicating it onto another object and make this four. And we'll start with four here. We can go down to five, six. So that's how you would add multiple objects. But anyway, back to our first set here. Let's say that we want to preview this and make sure everything's set up properly. Uh, let's go ahead and hit render. And on our troll down here, we can click on puzzle map. Now you're not going to see anything. That's because you can't preview these unless you're in bucket mode. So let's click this button and switch to bucket mode. So everything's working right. And now we can just go to our direct output here, click enable. We'll probably change this to EXR and change it to float. And then we'll just render that out and jump into After Effects. So let's drag this on top. And now we have to figure out how to extract the red mat, the blue mat, and the green mat. If you render it out in EXR, it's super easy. You can just uh, type in extractor and drag and drop that onto your layer. And under the extractor options, if you just click here, um, you have a red, green, and blue. If we just change these to red for all three of the channels and hit OK, now we have our red mat. Then we can duplicate our bottom layer, change the top one to Luma mat, and now we have a mat for that object. And now we can just add whatever we want. We could add a hue saturation, colorize that, and play around with the hue of that object. If we want to change which buffer we're using, you can just go back to that extractor, click on it, and change the layers to, say, green and then we'll be using the green mat. And then one other way that you could extract these, which is also really nice, is by using a set mat effect. If we drag and drop that onto our layer here, you can just use the mat from a red channel, and now we have that red. So if we isolate that, you can see we have our red, and if we change that to green or blue, we can access those mats. Then all you have to do is duplicate to your bottom layer and change it to an alpha mat, and now we have access to those. That's a quick look at puzzle mats. Hope you found that useful and we'll talk to you next time. Ciao.